Well, it's time for some business news. Calls for an acceleration in developing capacities for renewable energy, such as solar and wind in Southeast Asia. Well, this includes building more infrastructure to tap these resources. A recent study showed that there needs to be 7 to 12 times more investment in the region so countries can achieve their various net zero emission goals between 2050 and 2060. Over the past five years, the region attracted the second lowest levels of investment ahead of sub-Saharan Africa. The study was carried out by the Singapore Economic Development Board and led by management consultant firm McKinsey and Company. One challenge cited the pace at which regulations move, for example, in power generation and allowing the private sector to take part in the renewable energy sector. The second would be the infrastructure. Uh, as I said, it's not just about building the projects, but we need to have the full supply chain ecosystem, right? The infrastructure to, uh, to manufacturing, to manufacture some of this in Southeast Asia, but also infrastructure on the grid to take this variable renewable energy. Otherwise, uh, the grid uh, will find it hard to absorb this intermittency. We need to work with the ecosystem partners and collaboration. There is no way to work just as one industry or government or the customer. It is all the ecosystem together and not only one country as well as a region. Region has different standards, different prerequisites, different policies, as well as different resources. More analysis, we're joined by Antonio Castellano. He's partnered at McKinsey and Company. And uh, thanks so much for joining us this evening, Mr. Castellano. Thank you for having uh, there's me. Several here. points even raised in just those uh, two uh, sound bites we just heard. But let's get to a more, I suppose, basic point. So, seven, you need to raise, we need, Southeast Asia must add more renewable energy capacity every year by seven to 12 times after 2030, just so it meets its zero emission goals 2050 to 2060. How do you get that number 7 to 12 times? Thanks for the question. We look in the report with EDB about what is the demand for electricity in 2050, 2060. And then we look, we model what energy mix do you need to satisfy that demand, to meet, as you said, the decarbonization goals and do it in the lowest possible cost. We look at solar, wind, storage, uh, carbon capture, hydrogen, and we found this staggering uh, outcome that after 2030, you need to increase the deployment of solar and wind by 7 to 12 times. To put it in perspective, it means uh, after 2030, every single year, you need to deploy as much more solar and wind that we have done in the last 20 years. Now that sounds highly... Uh, look, I don't want to put a damper on this, but if we look at Southeast Asia alone, so it's just ASEAN, 10 countries, hugely different on so many different levels. So we just heard you need investment, you need infrastructure, you need an ecosystem where everyone agrees on the same goals. How are you going to possibly reach that? You think that kind of level, that kind of increase in investment in just solar energy? Okay. So uh, you're raising an excellent point because if we look the cumulative investment needed until 2050 is short of one trillion. Uh, USD. The good news is that we were this morning in the EDB industry event, some uh, uh, financial institutions were there, and there is no shortage of capital to be deployed for uh, green energy of renewable projects. This is across Southeast Asia. This is across Southeast Asia. No shortage of people willing to put money in this. Correct. With two uh, important points. Number one is the bankability of the projects and the ability to bring in multilateral agencies or concessionary capital when needed. And secondly, to develop innovative products that cater to the need of the region, which are, as you said, very different from what has been done maybe in Europe or in the US. Under those two conditions, clearly there could be an exciting uh, future because if you can deploy one billion, one trillion in uh, 30 years, that's a lot of money, a lot of Okay, I'm going to get you to explain those two points further, but you are saying that Whatever, problem, I mean, whatever differences we might have, say, say, between Singapore and Cambodia, Singapore and Vietnam, Laos and Indonesia, these two things, bankability and uh, developing 
innovative products that meet the needs of the population. If those two things can be met for any one of these countries, we are looking at investment actually going in and going where it's needed. That's exactly right. So this can be done. This can be done. And this should be done. So why is it not being done? Okay. Um, Southeast Asia, uh, on one side, has been uh, among the lowest in terms of deployment of renewables. It's also true that we have been benefit from great affordability and security of supply because of the endowment of gas and coal. So to change this, we need, obviously, is a dynamic world, and uh, we need to consider how to scale the renewables, addressing bankability and, uh, and so forth, while preserving the affordability and the security of supply that are so important for the future. That is really the, why it takes a little bit more of time in such a diverse region. And diversity should be addressed through uh, financing hub like Singapore and local uh, investment and financial banks like we have in each country. This healthy competition can really resolve uh, the, the, the issue you highlighted. Well, your report also mentioned issues with the pace at which regulations move, for example, in power generation and, I suppose, how far the private sector uh, cooperates with the public. And we keep hearing that PVs, if you do not work together, neither side will either have, I suppose, the longevity, the commitment, the funding to carry these kinds of projects through. So your report has actually pointed these out. Were there any solutions suggested in your report to how we might, I suppose, mitigate these obvious challenges? I see actually a lot of uh, uh, thinking and the best talents being pulled by each of the countries in which uh, I operate uh, be deployed to solve uh, these challenges that you just mentioned. So actually I'm quite uh, positive on the ability that countries at different pace, some coming earlier, some a little bit later, will solve the solution. And I think collaboration and sharing best practice will certainly help uh, solve some of these regulatory challenges. All right, so on a very positive note there, Mr. Antonio Castellano, partner at McKinsey & Company, who has contributed to this report. Thank you for coming us and joining Thank us you. this evening.